the geopolitical nature of ancient Greece. Let's look at ancient Greece in the eastern Mediterranean. Now, we can't see a lot of Greece here, but we see the first thing that we need to see, and that is Crete. The island of Crete. Crete is where the first Greek civilization develops. And look at Crete. Let your eye go from left to right, and you end up at the island of Cyprus, and then you end up in that area called Cana. And if you go up above Cyprus, you end up in an area up there that was part of Mesopotamia at the time. If you go from Crete and you go to the south, southeast, you end up in Egypt. And if you go from Crete and you go slightly northeast, you end up in Anatolia, the part that's modern Turkey. So let's look at it again. Here, we have drawn back, and now you can see all of Greece. And you see in various colors all of the civilizations that the Greeks could make contact with by sailing to the east in one direction. East, or east and slightly south, or east across the, A the Aegean Sea, or south, southeast from Crete, or even from the Greek mainland to the Egyptian kingdom. Now, what does that mean? That means that the Greeks had an opportunity because of where they lived for several things to happen. Number one, they lived out of the way, so they weren't going to be rapidly and immediately invaded. But at the, the second thing they had was they had plenty of water there. That was their protection from invasion, but it was also the way they could travel to meet these people. And when they met those people, the third thing is they had a lot of contact with a lot of different civilizations. With the first civilization in the world, the Mesopotamians. And with the second civilization in the world, the ancient Egyptians. And in Anatolia, with a series of civilizations, like the ancient Trojans, and the Hittite Empire that allowed them to see different civilizations in action. And it helped them develop their own civilization. Now here, let's take a look at this map. Everything that's in the orangish color is Phoenician. And the Phoenicians live over here in the Levant just north of, of what was ancient Israel, and you can see it in the inserted box. Look at the inserted box. The yellow is ancient Israel, and the sort of pinkish color, orangish color, is uh, the Phoenicians. But when you look at the big map, it's just a small piece of territory on there along the coast in the Levant. The Phoenicians were were marvelous people. They were great sailors. They loved to make money. And they put the two of them together to sail all throughout the Mediterranean in search of trade from which they could make money. And in order to make money and to manage money and to improve their trading, they were also very inventive. So you can see the Phoenicians left their homeland there, and they came way over into the western Mediterranean, and there along the north coast of Africa, they have founded a very big and important city that we will talk about later on called Carthage. And Carthage controlled all that northern coastline of the western Mediterranean on 
on the African side and a little bit of the southern part of modern day Spain. Now, if you look at the more brownish color on the map, that's the ancient Greeks. And you can see they spread out. They spread out because they sailed, but they stayed in the eastern half of the Mediterranean. So that became their pond. And the Phoenicians moved to the western part of the Mediterranean and tried to make it their pond. So the Greeks live in their Greek mainland. They live along the coast of Anatolia, and they go through the Straits, which is a narrow body of water that's maybe only about a mile wide, and it takes them from the Mediterranean into the Black Sea, and they settle along the shores of the Black Sea, where they do a lot of trading. The Ionian Greeks, who live on the west side of Greece, also move into the bottom of Italy, and then up into uh, the, the top area there where Italy meets France and along the French Gold Coast. So what we see is over time, because the Greeks were able to stay out of the initial squabbles that went on between the great civilizations and the great empires, they were able to develop themselves and become the dominant power in the Eastern Mediterranean. Now let's look at the map and you can see again the Eastern Mediterranean and how they're situated to become eventually the dominant power there. Look at them, they're on the western edge of the Eastern Mediterranean and they will eventually just keep moving east, 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 east until they begin to control that whole area. So let's summarize. The first Greek civilization is on the island of Crete. We looked at Crete when we started. And east from Crete takes you to the Levant. And in the Levant we found the Phoenicians. Those seagoing traders who went to the western part of the Mediterranean founded Carthage and their own big business empire there. To the south southeast from Crete is Egypt, and the people from Crete traded a great deal with Egypt, and we'll talk about that when we begin to talk about Crete itself. And then, of course, if you go across the Aegean, from the Greek mainland, you get to Anatolia, what's modern Turkey today, where the ancient Trojans lived, and peoples like the Hittites, who established a great empire there. Now, when the Greeks showed up, they had sort of a little song and dance they did, it was like a meet, greet, and exchange. And the Greeks could be very, very friendly. But at the same time, if you cross them in the wrong way, they could be very, very mean and go to war with you. But on the whole, the Greeks tried to start out with a meet, greet, and exchange. And one of the successes of the Greek civilization was the character of the Greeks themselves. The Greek people were naturally curious. When they came someplace, it wasn't like, oh, this isn't the way we do it. These people are crazy. It was, what are these people doing? Let me see what they're doing. Let me see how they do it. Let me listen to why they say they're doing it this way. So they would observe, and when they had observed that they would assess, they would decide what they thought of what they saw. Was it a good idea? Was it a bad idea these people had? Good ideas, the Greeks would adapt. Now, adapt makes means you take it, but you change it. So the Greeks would take ideas from people they met, and they would change them so that they would do that idea their own way. They would borrow an idea, and then they would create a Greek way of doing it. And often it became, in their minds, a brilliant Greek idea. But sometimes they didn't like what they saw. And when that happened, sometimes the Greeks would invent a response to it. In other words, they would invent some way 
that they could respond and block something that they didn't like. And that tells us what we would call the geopolitical nature or importance of Greece in the Eastern Mediterranean. 